Hi everybody, my name is David Perez and this is 7657, the course where you're going to write your master's thesis and get yourself graduated at the same exact time. Hope everyone's doing well. For me, it is mid-August and as much as uh, it was nice to take off uh, most, of, uh, most of July to do what, well, I guess do what teachers do when they're, when they're off. It is also nice to be uh, to get the gears turning again and produce content for you guys. Kind of get moving towards the uh, the start of the the start of the school year. Um, this is your this is your first lecture, the the welcome video. So we're going to cover a bunch of different things, which uh, I'll begin highlighting in the in the next slide. Uh, for now, I'm kind of excited to get this uh, this uh, this semester going. It's uh, it's kind of a little bit of a welcome back for for many of us to to on to to live teaching to to teaching in a school. So I am I'm definitely excited about definitely excited about that. As far as the picture that you're looking f that that you're looking at right now, um, I like to share personal pictures with you guys uh, on the first slide just uh, just so you can see I'm a I'm a regular guy. Um, this was kind of a serendipitous picture in the sense that we were driving through the White Mountains of New Hampshire and I came across this shot and jumped out of the car, took it, got back in the car and kept driving. But it came out, it came out really, really nice. You'll have a chance to maybe meet uh, some of my family through, through the pictures uh, as well. Anyway, I am going to stop yapping and let you guys get started with, uh, with your first slide on the next one. I do hope you guys enjoy it, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye, everybody. From this particular lecture, the welcome video, you could expect a bunch of different things, but for the most part, we are going to talk about the nitty-gritty, the nuts and bolts of the semester, and what it's going to look like for you. First off, uh, I do want to introduce myself formally so you know who, uh, who, the, who the human is on the other side of the voice. I definitely want to visit some, some key points of the syllabus. Then we're going to spend some time on, on course mechanics so you, you have an idea of how, of how the course is going to work, of how it's all going to play out and, and what, are the different, what are the different places that you could get your resources from. And then finally, we'll talk about some keys to your success in this class. Without further ado, let's get on it. I'd like to take this slide to properly introduce myself. So my name is David Perez, and um, I will be the I will be the professor for for this uh, for this semester and for this course. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, let me see where to begin here. Um, I've been a teacher in a DOE, a regular PSIS, just like every other teacher that you that you've ever met. Um, I've been uh, I've been at my school for for 22 years, and uh, when I say it out loud, it actually seems like a really long time. And and I mean it kind of has been, you know. In, in a lot of ways, it's, it's it's been a career. It's been a career already. Still have a little ways to go, but um, but yeah, 22 years is is uh, is a good bit of time to to begin to understand the way the way things work within a uh, within a school building. Uh, during those 22 years, um, I've taught in. Pretty much every single special education setting that that the DOE has had to offer. Um, my most restrictive classroom that I've ever taught in was a six one seven class. So think about that six one seven, six students, one teacher, <laughs> me, and seven paraprofessionals. So that restrict that most restrictive setting was six a uh, six one setting. But each one of the students had their own paraprofessional. Um, that was uh, that was assigned to them. Uh, these were students that were all multiply hi handicapped. Uh, they were all wheelchair bound. Um, they had uh, you know no mo zero to no mobility. Um, so each one of them had an assigned para. Uh, that extra para, because remember six one seven, uh, that extra para was for one reason only, and that was a bathroom para. Because as a uh, as a male teacher. Uh, the principal felt that uh, it would be inappropriate for you know for for male for a male teacher to to be a bat part of the bathroom process, so you talk about such a restrictive setting. But on the other end of the of the spectrum, I've taught in in several you know self contained uh, sorry several uh, general education classes. I've taught in ICT. Uh, I've taught in twelve one twelve one one twelve one two. Uh, so it's I, I have a a pretty good a pretty good background when it comes to the different. Um, the different settings that many of you are teaching in uh, at the at the moment. Uh, 
I was a classroom teacher for many, many years. Uh, I would say about seven or eight years ago, um, the, the, the principal asked me to be something called the IEP teacher. I'm sure many of your schools have an IEP teacher uh, as well as mine. And basically that transitioned me from, from, a, from a classroom setting into more of a to more of an administrative setting, even though I'm still on a teacher line, I'm just a regular teacher. Um, lately, I've, I've, I've taken on more administrator responsibilities. So that's been, uh, that's been, fairly, that's been fairly different. Um, it's been six years, and uh, I, very much like the, I very much like the administrative position, and it gives me a chance to go into the classroom you know, several, times, uh, several times a week, and uh, I get a good mix of, uh, of, both, uh, of both worlds. That uh, that kind of exists within within a DOE classroom. Uh, I've been at Brooklyn College for for 14 years now, um, and it's it's kind of interesting because whenever I whenever I make this introduction, I usually emphasize the fact that the fact that what you're seeing right now, I've done, I've run through this cycle of of lectures or, or lecture. Um, over 25, 30 times. So you're seeing almost like a distillation of 30 different attempts at the same outcome. What's interesting about this particular semester is that this is the first time that I am, this is the first time that I'm lecturing according to this particular sequence, which is going to be writing your thesis through a asynchronous format, meaning that, you know, my lectures are on demand. And but yet you are still collecting but you yet you are still collecting data so even though it's even though a lot of what you're going to see has been distilled over many many years and many trials and many errors because there have been um to some degree it's still new and fresh for me so i like that i like that idea very very much and i'm i'm thankful that i have plenty of time to kind of bring these these lectures together for you and that it's not kind of rushed and 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 kind of uh, cobbled together the way it was when, when we first went went to remote learning. Um, my my educational background is is actually is actually quite varied. Uh, I'm I'm originally from Miami, and I went to I, I came to New York as a uh, as a as a freshman college student, and um, uh, got my got my uh, BA in child psychology, in usual four years or whatever it was three and a half years. And um, I was one of those rare individuals, I think, that really knew what he wanted to do from from day number one. Uh, I come from a long line of um, of, of teachers, you know, grandparents, uh, parents, aunts, uncles. Uh, it's kind of like the family business in a way. So even though I had entertained thoughts about doing something else, in, in the end, once I graduated with that child psychology degree, in essence, I became a fellow before we even called it fellows, um, and the reason for that is because I, I started teaching in a small private school, and they didn't require a master's the way that DOE did. Um, so I taught there for four years, and they they actually paid for my master's as part of my uh, as part of my uh, my agreement with them, and uh, it was kind of nice because I didn't take a semester off. The, you know, the B BA ended in you know in June or whatever it was, and I was in a master's program at Adelphi uh, by. You know, by 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 early summer, by by midsummer, and uh, and into the fall, so kind of went all the way through there. Got my master's in in special education, and and then someone gave me some advice that for me was transformative. Um, it literally changed my life, and I'm going to give you that advice right now because I think it's important advice. I was at the time I had made the transition to the DOE. I had my master's and. There was the idea, which is obviously still around today, called a 30 or above, 30 credits above your master's. And for those of you that don't know, what it essentially means is a, a nice pay raise. At the time, it was about 22%, which for a young, for, for a young couple, uh, that, was, uh, that, that was a lot of money at the time. And someone said to me, look, you're going to get your 30 or above Perez. Don't get it in some bogus, you know, credits, you know, some G credits and online credits and, you know, kind of mix and match things. Make yourself a more marketable teacher. And I, I kind of took that to heart and I said, okay, fine. So I went to, I went to a couple of, I, I looked into a couple of different programs and one of the ones that stood out was a, a professional diploma at St. John's. It was 32 credits 
and um, it was it was uh, a professional diploma in instructional design, which I had an interest in. And okay, so I finished my my thirty two credits. Uh, I finished my thirty two credit diploma. I got my I got my pay bump. I went into Sister Burke's office, who is uh, who was my advisor at the time, and I said, Sister Burke, it was a pleasure meeting you. Uh, thank you very much for everything. And she said to me, where, where, where do you think you're going? I said, no, I graduated and I got my pay raise. She says, no, 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 no. She says, that that, that was just a little preamble. You're going to stick around and you're going to finish your, your dissertation. I was like, nah, come on, that's craziness. Now, I, I know you don't know Sister Burke, but when Sister Burke says something, <laughs> you better well listen. And you know what? I did listen to Sister Burke. Um, I completed my, my coursework. Uh, I began my, my thesis, uh, my, doctoral, my doctoral research, and it took me a total of six years with coursework and dissertation to finish my doctorate, but, um, but I, defended, I defended my doctoral research uh, going, on, going on 12 years now, and the reason that I thought it was transformative is because since, since day one of, of St. John's and, and my, my quest to, to, get that, to get that doctorate, to, you know, to get those initials at the end of my name, um, good things began, began to happen, you know, and, and one of them, you know, that, that applies directly here is, um, you know, I was hired by, I was hired by, by Brooklyn College. And yes, it was a long road and it was, and it was difficult, but I promise you, I am of average intelligence <laughs> at best. So the reason I tell you is because anybody could do it. Sure, maybe the doctor is not for you, but whatever it is that you do go to get your third year above in, Make sure it's something that will parlay into into making you uh, a teacher of a of a different caliber. And to be honest with you, hopefully it'll it'll make you it'll make you a little bit of money because even though the teaching profession does pay well, it's always nice to have that extra income. And you know, as 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 cheap as Brooklyn College is, it's a it's a pretty nice after school gig. So that's kind of me in a nutshell, uh, personally. And I'll wrap it up because I'm going on 10 minutes on this slide, which is a little crazy. Um, personally, uh, I am a father of four beautiful children. Uh, my wife, my wife is uh, my wife is a gem. Uh, the reason that I mention her is because while I'm doing what I love here, uh, in this case, talking to my computer in the living room, uh, she's she's outside taking care of homework and and everything else that needs to be taken care of with the with the kids so that I can spend my my time with uh, with you with my students um, and of course that goes that goes also with uh, you know back when when we were when we were actually coming into coming into a campus so she definitely gets a shout out every every single semester and uh, this one is is no exception. Yeah, I know I went over a little bit, guys. I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm talking about my favorite topic in the world. <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> Let's move on here. So we'll make this slide ultra quick. Um, this is the this is a slide that I would typically use when uh, when we were in person, uh, just to uh, just to kind of get to know the just to get to know the crowd a little bit and and see uh, see where you are, see what what's going on out there. Um, I especially like the, the, the question there, uh, one person uh, that you like to have dinner with and, and why. Uh, you'd be surprised how much I learned by what, what people, uh, by what people uh, have to say in, in response to that question. So I left it here uh, for one specific reason. Uh, a lot of students uh, do like to virtually meet um, their teachers. So if you, uh, if you do want to virtually meet and you eventually want to send me a little, a little email or something saying, hi, how are you, Perez? You know, this is who I am. I, I love to get those little emails. Uh, just please, if you don't mind, uh, include uh, one person that you like to have dinner with and, and why. I always find the answer to that question really, really, really interesting. Uh, so we'll leave it at that. Obviously, you don't have to email me if you, if you don't want to. Uh, but if you do, it's a nice way to break the ice. Next few slides here. I'd like to go over the syllabus. If you want to have a, a copy out when we, when we go through it, it might be helpful. I do have some screenshots that, that will help you uh, right here. I'm going to take somewhat of a highlighted approach to, to going over the syllabus. I, I think much of it, in fact, the vast majority of it is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, for, for clarity's sake, uh, we are section TQ5, and that's next to the, the course number, 7657, in case you need it for any kind of paperwork. 
And also, uh, David Perez 11230, I'll probably say it about 100,000 times during the course of my lectures, but you hear it for the first time right over here. It is the primary way that, we're, that we are going to communicate with each other. And um, I don't think that there's anything else that I'm going to cover here, but I will look at the next slide right now. There's always a big question here. What texts are we going to use in order to learn this uh, process of action research? The truth is, is that Brooklyn College recommends uh, two texts, the, the Mills and the, and, the Leedy, and the Leedy book, both very good quality books. And I personally do not require any textbooks for, for the course. They are a good resource should you need them, and if that is your, your preferred learning method, uh, by all means, they have uh, used copies as of last night for under a dollar on Amazon. So go ahead and feel free to buy an older copy and use it as a resource. Uh, to go with that, uh, a couple years ago, I got kind of tired of trying to match my instruction to, to the textbooks. So I wrote kind of like a guide, almost like a little, like a little mini textbook that matches my, uh, my, course, uh, my course lectures. I wouldn't say perfectly, but it, it, comes, it comes pretty close. Um, that uh, book is going to be offered to you free of charge. Um, I put it in the, in the resources section of, uh, Google, of Google Classroom. I usually, I usually put out uh, a few chapters at a time as you, as you need them. If you, if you do feel that, that you need that resource and you need access to it, go ahead and, and knock yourself out uh, through, through Google Classroom. But uh, the vast majority of you will, uh, will have enough with, with, just, with just lecture. They're, they're pretty, they're, they're, they're pretty, the lectures are pretty detailed enough where, where usually the textbook doesn't, doesn't come into play, but you have a couple of options should you need uh, that, that, type of, uh, that type of format. So probably the most important slide for you is going to be the one right in front of you, and that is Perez. What do I have to do in order to pass this course? So you're going to have to write sections one, two, three, and four. Uh, starting from the top, your introduction with your lit review. Eventually, we'll get to the methodology. Once you've collected your data, we're going to analyze and interpret that data. And then finally, in section number four, you're going to, you're going to discuss the findings and come up with a brief action plan. That's it, guys. Um, oh, at the very, very bottom, there's a small IRB. Um, we'll talk about it, but it's just a little certificate and a little test that you have to take. Uh, we'll talk about it in, in, the, uh, in, future, in future recordings. But for now, your, your primary assignments are only, are only going to be uh, four of them. So it, it, in that sense, the course requirements are incredibly focused. There's not a lot of other work in this uh, in this class, other than writing your writing your thesis to the best of your to the best of your ability, let's take a look at the next slide so we can see some further expectations. Perhaps this second slide is my attempt to be as explicit as possible in the requirements. So we spoke about sections one through four. Obviously, we're going to talk about those in 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 a lot more detail. In fact, it's pretty much the purpose of the. Uh, of all my lectures is to talk about what what and how to accomplish each one of those sections. You have the IRB the IRB certification at the at the very bottom. What can you expect? So you could definitely expect to write twenty five to to thirty pages, and that's kind of like in the in the low range. I know most of you are thinking right now, geez, thirty pages, twenty five pages. There's no way I'm going to write that. It's okay. It, it's it's a process and it's a step. You're not writing all 30 pages uh, in in one sitting. I have to be honest. For a lot of you, uh, 30 pages is going to be unrealistic. You're going to want to write more, and it just happens every semester where the inertia of writing and research and you know hopefully being engaged with the with the process, you know, a process that has value to you. Um, is going to take you past those those thirty pages, but more or less, that's what that's what you could expect to write. Um, a second thing that that's going to be expected of you from from this semester is going to be that you are going to gather uh, different types of data from either your in person classes or your your virtual classes. So th those things should should definitely be mentioned. Once again, um, we have 
many, many lectures ahead of us to, to explain how each one of these are going to work. But for now, on a single slide, uh, this is pretty much what your semester is going to entail. Let's do a couple of quick uh, academic policies and, and things of, of, this, uh, of this nature. So right in the middle, you, our grading contract is, is uh, produced by, in fact, most of the stuff is produced by Brooklyn College. It's not, not necessarily up to me. Um, you have that, that grading scale um, right there, right there in the middle. I'll just get on my little highlighter here. Um, this is a good one, academic integrity, and, and, and it, it most certainly applies to the, uh, to the research course. Uh, for the purpose of transpar transparency and clarity, uh, all the work that you turn in automatically gets put through a, a plagiarism a plagiarism check. Uh, it is a plagiarism check that, that, I, that I've bought uh, several years ago, so it, it's not one of those free ones. It's something that, that tends to be a little more sophisticated. Um, and obviously, it, it's, you're, we're, we're not looking for 100% authentic work. But there is that that range of you know seventy to eighty percent original work that that I'm looking for. Uh, anything below that, and it probably triggers uh, some sort of email from me of you know hey what's going on here. Uh, but just so you know, there there is that that level of uh, of um, of back checking that that does take place with your with your work. Uh, at the very very at the very very bottom. Uh, if you if you do have um, some sort of accommodations and you are registered with the Office of, of Disabilities in Brooklyn College uh, and you do require extra time, you do require some other accommodations, uh, by all means, uh, please, please reach out to me. Uh, it's probably better to, to do that earlier in the semester than later in the semester. Uh, I've had the instances where, where you know, work has been, been very, very late. And then, then the then the accommodations were presented to me, and frankly, it's great. I don't mind giving the accommodations. I don't mind that at all. But then I, as a teacher, can't do anything to support, you know, what your what your particular learning needs uh, might be. So, um, you know, definitely something that you can you can uh, you can reach out to me, and uh, if it requires discussion, we'll talk about it. If it doesn't, then you know that's okay. I'm I'm just being informed, and that's fine too. Uh, I left uh, the top one right up here uh, for, for very, very last because this will always come into play. Not you. It's going to apply to someone else because your work is going to be in on time and perfect every single time. But just in case that life does tend to get in the way, and for, for some of you, for a percentage of you, it will, uh, the, the late policy is as follows. You are deducted 5% about a point, a point and, and, and a fraction uh, for each day of lateness, okay? Not each week, each day of lateness. And that's important for you to hear because a lot of times, a lot of times what happens is, 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 you know, work doesn't come in on that due date, you know, whatever it is, March 23rd, you know, midnight, it doesn't get in on time. And instead of looking at it and saying, okay, you know what? I didn't get it in today, but I'm going to get it in tomorrow or the next day, and kind of minimizing the damage on 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 the on the point totals of your of your semester. It kind of just keeps going. What I'm hoping is, and in the past it's worked, that it's uh it's by day of lateness. So even if you miss you know even if you miss one deadline or two deadlines, it's not the end of the world. When it really begins to impact your grade is when it gets left for two weeks, three weeks, and then all of a sudden now, you know, the points really start flying off. I have to be honest. I, I could care less about, about points. I, I know everyone says that. Or I should say not everyone, but it's, it's probably the least favorite part of my job is, is to have to assign a grade to your papers, have to have to take a rubric and, and apply it to your paper. It's not something that I particularly, particularly appreciate. But it is part of my role, and I do take that role quite seriously. So what I'm hoping is that, is that this, in, this instills in you the fact that, listen, you, you, know, you miss a deadline or so, it's not going to impact your overall, your overall grade too much. It's to, it's to eliminate the chronic lateness uh, and, kind of keep you, and kind of keep you on track. And in that sense, it's probably just as much for you as it, as it is for me. I don't want to talk any more about that because you guys are going to be fantastic. But I do want to go to the next slide. This is more or less what your course outline will, will look like, uh, starting with 
lecture number one, which you're listening to right now. Uh, the the topics that are that are in the center in the centerpiece are are going to be fairly accurate um, because a, a lot of these recordings have been have been already done. In fact, the vast majority of it have been done. Um, I was able to put kind of like the, match the the topic with with the lecture uh, fairly closely. I know I know speaking as a as a as a student for many many years the course outline is something that you kind of look at once and then probably never look at again you just kind of go with the lectures as they uh as they come but if you if you do have a couple moments and you just want to kind of uh I don't know scan scan throughout the course of the of the 12 uh of the 12 lectures that that are going to be presented to you 12 or so uh you can kind of do that and get a general kind of general plot of of the way that that your semester will go if not you know just you could also just sit back and, and enjoy the uh the movie magic jumping here to the last slide of the syllabus review uh you'll notice a couple of uh, a couple of different things in front of you uh the first one is that we will be having periodic uh, google meet sessions i've noticed in in semesters past as we've uh, transitioned from from in person to remote, that the the Google sessions are actually have been a, a really big help, especially early in the semester. I noticed that that as the semester moves along, the the Google Meets become a little bit lighter attended, and actually that makes me happy to hear when when the last Google Meet really doesn't have very many people, because it means that everyone is in the in the right mode and and in the right frame of mind and uh, the Google Meet becomes a little bit redundant. But for now, I do plan on having three, three Google Meets. Uh, definitely uh, one is going to be in September. Uh, my, my preference is that, is that the class has a chance to, to look over some of the content um, before, before we have a Google Meet. So let's say, for example, in this batch, you'll have the welcome video, which you're, you're watching now, and, and then three, three other videos to watch. I prefer if the, if the class has a chance to look at them and, and absorb them a little bit so that when we do come back for our first Google Meet, um, there, there's, a, there, there's direct questions and, and the, the discussion's a little bit more focused than if, uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to, to see anything. Uh, we, will, uh, we will make those dates, uh, we will make those dates you know, kind, of, uh, kind of together to some degree and we'll find some common time. It, usually it's, it's not a big deal. I think we're all pretty accustomed to that. Uh, these days. Uh, the due dates at the bottom, those are real due dates. And if you'll notice your one, two, three, and section number four, those are your, your assignments that are due for the semester. And what I tried to do was I tried to bunch section one and two together. And then on the other end of the semester, section three and four. One of my complaints I remember from, from, from my time sitting on, on your end of the, uh, of the class was that you know, professors would often have, you know, assignments kind of weekly or bi-weekly. And that was always kind of hard for me as a teacher to, to keep up with, uh, with small assignments that had, be, had to be done over and over again. So uh, to remedy that, what I, what, I tend, what I tend to do now is I tend to bunch the, the assignments together and bookend the, bookend the semester. So the middle of the semester is, is kind of open. Uh, in your case, the middle of the semester is open because you're going to be doing your data collection during that time uh, while in September and, and the beginning of October you set yourself up then you have that that nice long break between October 19th and November 23rd in which you're going to do your your data collection and then we'll come back and wrap up the 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 assignments and your thesis leading up to the last day of class which is December 21st and that would be a Tuesday so that is it in a, in a in a nutshell. I suppose we'll have we'll have more time to talk about it, or we'll certainly have time to ask questions about the syllabus in uh, in that first Google Meet. But for now, it's kind of what it looks like. So I know I know I had said that this is the first time that I'm running through this particular sequence um, or this particular format for for your research project with the online and the data collection. But um, I have I have I have done this I have done this research class through the through remote learning uh, because when when COVID when COVID first hit and we went on lockdown it was obviously in the middle in the middle of the spring semester of last of last year and um, 
and yeah, I had to patch up. I we you know not I, but we all had to patch up our our instruction to kind of finish the year. But I had the advantage of teaching during the uh, d- during the summer 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 one, in which in which there was a kind of like a variant or a version of uh, of what what it is that we're going to be doing here. And one of the things that I learned over over those that semester or those two semesters is that students uh, in this course often feel anxiety uh, with uh, with what is perceived to be kind of like a lack of support. Um, not because of anything wrong that the that the that the professor or that the students are doing, but more because the venue of of having the remote learning gives the student the impression that they are kind of like on an island and and all alone. So one of the things I want to cover very early on as part of this idea of the syllabus and and you know kind of like what's gonna what's what to expect from the class um, is going to be uh, different levels of support. Let me show you them real quick on the next slide. Let's talk about these four levels of support that that I think are going to help you to to some degree. Uh, the first one is going to appear to be uh, quite obvious at at, uh, at initial at initial glance, but sometimes students forget. So keep in mind that that the lectures are obviously asynchronous; they're pre-recorded; they're there on demand. It should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Don't be scared to listen to to particular parts of the of the lecture uh, a couple of different times. It, if you don't necessarily get it the first time, if you're unsure about what's expected of you, or more what the what the process is in in completing a particular part of your of your thesis, go ahead and, and review and revisit uh, particular slides. The I'll mention it later, but I'll mention it here again. There's a couple of different formats that you're going to have for, for the lectures. Um, one of them is going to be uh, movie mode where you just press play and it kind of goes on its own and I become like a, <laughs> I become like a podcast in a way. Uh, but the, the other way is going to be through the individual PowerPoint slides. So you'll be able to go into a particular PowerPoint slide, click on a click on the little speaker button, which I'll show you in a little while and re- revisit just that one particular slide without having to go through the entire, quote unquote, to, through the entire movie. So if you find yourself a little confused, go ahead and go back and revisit. Uh, the second one is going to be uh, email. Uh, my uh, email address is David Perez 11230 at AOL. And I mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. I do take pride in getting back to my students, uh, certainly, within, certainly within 12 hours, if for some reason you haven't gotten a response uh, within a day, uh, by all means, uh, gently, gently give me a little, uh, a little push to uh, with with a follow up email. It means that that probably something has gone wrong. Uh, that that first email there, the David Perez, uh, is going to be the fastest way of doing it. I do have two other email addresses that are associated with the with the course. Uh, the second one is uh, the Gmail account, and that's what I use in order to create the the um, the Google Classroom, the Google Classroom that we'll be using. Again, we'll we'll look at that in, in a couple slides, and then finally the the last one is going to be my CUNY my CUNY address. Uh, those will have a delay on them. I just don't check them as often as I do David Perez. Uh, I do check the 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 Gmail a little bit more often than the CUNY. The CUNY I may check once every couple of days. So if you need support and you need, you need something kind of quick, uh, by all means, please use David Perez, uh, 11230 at AOL. Uh, we, another level of support uh, beyond just the email is going to be talking, uh, is going to be those, uh, those online class, classes that we're, going to, that we're going to schedule throughout the course of, uh, throughout the, course of, uh, of the semester. Uh, those are really good if you find yourself a little bit disassociated with uh, with the process if uh, if the asynchronous format is n- kind of not working for you and you just need like questions answered or you need uh, some some uh, kind of human interaction with the process uh, by all means those are going to work for you and an extension of that is going to be a phone and online conference I'm a really really big proponent of jumping onto a Google meet you know during the afternoon and answering some questions, maybe doing a little writing together. We'll share screens. 
uh, I've had a lot of success doing that, and I'm pretty open as to when I could do that. Uh, pretty much from any time from 5:30 and on, uh, I'm I'm usually available. I'm usually available for for those kind of mini conferences. And I'll say something here, and and take it for what it's worth. There, there will be a, a nice percentage of you that will never use any one of these things. And, and that's fine too. If lecture is done the way that I hope that it's done, I hope that none of you will have to use any of the, these things. Now, I know that's not realistic, but um, there will be a percentage of, you, a percentage of you that will just kind of do your work uh, quietly and independently without, uh, without any need for support. And uh, that's also fine. Don't think that that's kind of like an odd, uh, an odd piece. But for the, for the most part, uh, we do exchange a lot of emails and we do tend to talk a lot um, throughout the course of the semester. <laughs> I debated whether to do this. The, I debated whether to present these, these slides in the past five minutes because uh, I've been talking a lot already. Uh, but I will, um, and this will be this will be really quick. Uh, these are actual real these are actual real e real emails. Um, I'm not going to read them to you. You can go ahead and hit the pause button in whatever platform you've chosen to view this uh, and kind of read them. The purpose of me giving you th this this uh, these these little mini models is the fact that if we are going to communicate via email and and through the written word. Um, I kind I kind of I, I need to have the ability to help you and if you take a look at this one in front of you Which was on March 12th of 09 and, and for the life of me. I don't remember who wrote it, but someone did um, This is what the person this is what the person wrote <laughs> How are you supposed to help a person when, when when they write something like this to you take a look at the next one though? This is this is almost like the the other end of the rainbow here, where where the first one had just way too much information about stuff that I don't need to know, um, but this one had almost no information. It it it's almost like it, it was equally as difficult to help this student as it was to the to the last one. So let's try to find middle ground here. So of course this would be a model of. This would be a model of an email that, that actually worked out really, really well. Um, what, I, what I happen to like about this particular email is that the person was very specific in, in the help that, that they needed. Um, I know sometimes we, we don't, sometimes we're, we're, we're completely lost and we don't even know what to ask. Um, if I've done my job well during lectures, that shouldn't be an issue here. It should be more a matter of, you know, look, Perez, th this is what I'm struggling with. Um, this is what I have so far. Uh, you know, can you can you help me take the can you help me take the next step? You know, I'm kind of stuck in the mud. Can you can you pull me out of the mud a little bit? And and yeah, I absolutely I absolutely can could try. Um, but you could see how how this email um, really kind of you know is that is that middle ground between not too much and not too little, and is phrased just right. And of course, they get a smiley face. All right, two more slides here on seeking help. Um, you're you're going to have to be somewhat proactive if you if you do need help. Um, the the way the way that distance learning works, and I'm sure you've been you've been at it for for a couple of semesters now, is that to be honest, I won't know whether whether you're struggling or not. When when we're in person and we're on campus and I see people on a week to week basis, I kind of have a good idea of of who's you know, kind of like on pace and with me and kind of moving forward with our arms locked together and who has fallen behind. I don't have that luxury uh, through, through, the remote, through the remote learning. So you, you have to kind of be proactive. As, as part of that, your lectures are going to have something called a try it now slide. And a try it now slide is, is a basic kind of like important task that has to do with one of the assignments that, that, that have been assigned. And a lot of times when you when when you do a try it now or when you when you attempt to complete a try it now that the, the task that's associated with the try it now uh, it helps you understand whether whether you're whether you're confused about about that particular segment of the of the lecture so it becomes a very good uh, a very good step to share with me um, if you do decide to reach out uh, once you see the try it now slides, and there'll be one later on in this lecture when we actually get to some content, hopefully towards the end here, um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, you'll see how, how it's, it, it becomes very, very easily shareable. Um, I will say one more thing about the Try It Now slides. Nine out of ten times, maybe even ten out of ten times, whatever you do during a Try It Now uh, will be a cut and paste activity uh, for your thesis, meaning that as you write it, you can really be writing it in your thesis because eventually you are going to use it. Um, I'm sure I mentioned that later on in, in the uh, later on in, during lecture, but just so you could hear it for the first time now. My suggestion is that as you as you're going through lecture, you do the try it nows. I mean, it's it's just a nice easy way to to kind of practice some muscle memory with uh, what's being presented during lecture. With all that being said, um, for the vast majority of you, at least if history has, uh, it, at least if history repeats itself to some degree, um, for for the majority of you, the online content will be will be enough. <laughs> yes, in fact, it will be more than enough for for most of you, um, and. You know, not everyone not everyone is going to seek that that in person interaction. Uh, what the way I like to look at the way I like to look at help and and you know personal interactions is I, I am available as much as you need me to be available. For some of you that are listening to this, we'll never meet. You're going to submit your 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 assignments, uh, you know, obviously via via remote uh, format, and. Um, you know, all, all I'll do is be able to to read your read your work, and you know what? That's perfectly fine. That's what remote distance, uh, remote learning is is kind of about. Um, but just have in the back of your mind that 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 even though you don't need to, I am I am here as much as you need me to be here, and that's all I have to say about that. Let's talk about a textbook. So for for many years now, I've had some friction with the textbooks that have been chosen for for the research class by by our department. Um, there was nothing wrong with the text. I mean, they were good. They were good textbooks. But what I found was that that they were so comprehensive that, I mean, we were using maybe eighty uh, percent. I'm sorry, twenty percent of the of the textbook, uh, of the content of the textbooks, and eighty percent was, again, good stuff, good information, but just with you know, outside of the the scope of, of our of our class. So a couple semester go, semesters ago, what I decided to do was uh, was write my own textbook textbook. And I know that seems kind of grand, but it really isn't. It's it's more of a it's more of a manual that is going to that's going to really match this particular this particular class and this particular uh, set of set of steps that I'm trying to present to you in and not only that but in the order that I present them to you so you have an option of of a of a Perez of a Perez made uh, text it's pretty experimental it's uh, still kind of raw kind of like a like a little beta test however um, the good part is it's free of charge uh, it's going to be available on blackboard or on Google classroom and uh, it'll be It'll be either on the on the drive on the drive on the drive pages or um, in the document section of Blackboard. Uh, most of you are not going to need to open up this textbook. Lectures will provide everything that you need. Uh, for those of you that that do like a little bit of extra support and uh, you know some some extra documentation that that's that's in the written form, uh, the textbook really does match kind of. In some, to, to some degree, word for word, what it is that that lecture is trying to to convey. So um, look at it as a resource. It is there. It is free of cost. Uh, so you could use it definitely at your leisure. Uh, I would not buy. I would not buy the the two textbooks that are that are recommended for the for the class. I know I put them on the syllabus, but you know, we all go through that. You know, the horse and pony show as teachers sometimes. So um, uh, if you do buy it. You know, you could buy you could buy a version of you know maybe two versions ago or, or two editions ago. I think they call them. Uh, at last check, maybe like two semesters ago, I saw like older versions for like fifty cents on on Amazon or something. So definitely don't buy definitely don't buy the the new the new version of it. Um, I will probably ask at some point if anybody has used it and maybe uh, pick your brain a little bit about. You know whether you think that the that the book is good. If it's not good, you know, get like some, you know, get a critique on it. But other than that, use it at your leisure. 
lecture format may be a little bit different than you, you're used to, so let's talk about it for a sec. I think the most important thing to mention right off the bat is that we're going to be using the, the platform of, of, a Google, of a Google Classroom. I have tried in, in semesters past, especially when, when we transitioned um, to remote uh, in, early, uh, in early corona times. Um, but the, the, for some reason, Blackboard just doesn't just just can't do what what Google Classroom does. So this is what your this is what your home screen would kind of look like. Uh, there is a class code underneath our underneath our number underneath the edu number. Um, so if you ever do want to share that with a classmate, you you by all means you can go ahead and do that. Um, this page is also where where the announcements will appear, and I, I typically try to check in about about once every two weeks, usually about once a week um, during, uh, during the more busy times of the, of the semester. So you, you, will get, you will get certain announcements uh, during, during the course of that time. Uh, the one thing I, I will say though is um, if you do have a question about an announcement that was made or you know, a, a specific question that you do want to address to me specifically, uh, don't comment in the announcement. Chances are I'm going to see that days after I post it. So you can just send that directly to, to, my, uh, to my email. If it's just a general question or just a general comment or some pleasantries or some niceties, uh, by all means, go ahead and, uh, and post there as, as, much as, you, as much as you need to. Let's take a look at the, at the classwork uh, tab there on the next slide. I'm hoping to some degree that, that a lot of you are, are fairly accustomed to using Google Classroom. If, uh, if nothing else uh, in, in your schools, I'm sure, I'm sure many of you or the vast majority of you have, have used this at some point. So um, anyway, just to, just to finish this up quickly here, uh, these are going to be your topics on, on the left hand side. So you are going to have a set of lectures. Those are the video lectures. Those are the ones that have been rendered into a video, I should say. Uh, then you have the raw PowerPoint, and those you could use if you if you would prefer to to listen to the lectures on a slide by slide basis. Uh, then you will have your your assignments, and then finally your your resources. Let's take a look at the bottom too. Oh, by the way, the the lecture right here, the the lecture tab. Uh, you'll notice that that everything is in is in draft because I'm not quite yet ready to to publish all of these just yet, um, but I will very very shortly. So this this is what the assignment uh, page or the assignment section would 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 look like. Uh, you are going to turn in all your work through through Google Classroom. Um, I I used to do I used to do it through through email as an email attachment, but I find that that grading through Google Classroom just keeps me organized and keeps you up to date on on what your grades are and and your notes and all the all the all the the back and forth that we we could possibly share during a uh, during a grading assignment um, I don't think I have another slide but let me take a look another aspect that may be a little bit different between this uh, these set of lectures and and other lectures that you've been exposed to is is in, is in many ways that the nature of the it is the nature of the lectures and I, I did this slide and it's a little facetious uh, We've all been in, in other classes. I've taught other classes. And let's face it, you, you got to fill a couple of hours as a, uh, as a professor and, and as a student. You got to sit there for a couple of hours. So there's a lot of reflection, right? You watch a video, you give an opinion, you have a discussion. Uh, there's various discretions that go on throughout the, uh, the two or three hour lecture. And that's all fine, fine and dandy. But this, these set of lectures, are going to be a little bit different, not just because they're remote, but because the nature of the class makes it that way. Let me give you a couple more details on that on the next slide. As part of as part of the uh, the refinement process that we spoke about a couple of uh, a couple of slides ago, um, the reflection of reflection of reflection is. Uh, is is something that that I try to very much steer the the entire the entire fifteen week uh, sequence away from um, instead of instead of having instead of having those discussions which which even if we were in person it, it wouldn't be a part of of what it is that we're doing but especially now obviously in remote learning um, what what I'm what I'm really looking to do with the lectures is teach you 
one skill at a time. It's a it's a clear skill. It's going to we're going to talk about what that skill is going to do for you, how to go about how to go about putting that skill together for yourself. I want to model that skill for you. And then the expectation is going to very much be that you're going to apply that skill to your own personal research and your own personal thesis. When you think about it, I'm a DOE teacher through and through because what I'm essentially doing is giving you a mini lesson, doing like some sort of little active engagement with the with the model, even though we're we're not really, you know, live in person. And then I expect you to generalize during your independent work period to your um to your particular to your particular, you know, to your particular thesis. So in that sense, uh, it, it, it will be it will be very, very it will be very, very focused. Um, I know that I know that only because the lectures have all been created, meaning that your PowerPoint slides are all done. And even though I am recording recording this uh, anew um, as as the as the fall as the fall progresses here a little bit, um, I can see that 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 the way that that the lectures are developing is that it does stay very very focused on those individual research skills that you're going to need in order to complete that that overall project so um hopefully that that means that that will have some some lectures that are that are fairly fairly quick even though this one seems to be getting away from me already <laughs> um that's okay um it, it'll 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 the intention will always be that that the nature of lecture is going to be very explicit and very, very focused. Um, that's it for kind of like the randomness of the, the beginning of the semester. Uh, hopefully between that and the full syllabus online, you have everything that you need to kind of uh, get started. Um, I am actually going to call it a night because uh, I'm a little bit tired and it's a beautiful evening. So I'm going to go take a little walk with, uh, with uh, some loved ones. And... Um, in the next slide, which will be about a second for you, uh, we are actually going to begin talking about some content. So exciting times, guys, exciting times. I'll see you on the other side. False, Perez. We are not going to talk about content right now. That's because there was a little adjustment I had to make. Uh, lecture number one had uh, the original vision for lecture number one had really gotten away from me, and I was kind of well over two hours. So I was like, no, that is too much. So that last slide is basically where where I chopped it. Uh, we only have a couple a couple more slides, and um, in these uh, in in the next slide we'll talk about some keys to success. And even though it's only one slide, man, I wanted to go on and on about it, but I controlled myself. Even though at face value it doesn't look that way, I actually spent a lot of time on on this particular slide because. When you ask a teacher, you know, what are the, what are the, the, the keys to, to success in your class? It doesn't matter what level you're teaching or what school you're teaching at. Uh, you, you, th there's, there's a lot that you want to tell your student. There's a lot of advice that you want to give your student. And what I had to do or what I kind of told myself to do was just put it on a single slide. And whatever you can't fit onto that single slide, you know what? going to have to deliver it throughout the course of, uh, of lectures. So these are four things that I came up with, and these are the, the right keys. So looking at the first one here, it, look at lecture as kind of like a podcast. You really should be making lecture a part of your, your weekly routine. Now, I know that may not necessarily line up with your, with your learning style or learning preferences, but if you ask me if you kind of set aside time on, on a weekly basis, it prevents things from like gathering on you from from bunching from bunching up on you so you know by all means please uh, as as long as it's not as long as it's not going to impact your life in 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 every possible way make lecture a part of your your weekly routine if we were on campus you would you would have had to do that anyway or you would have been forced to do that so you know what Continue that tradition to some degree, and if you have school on Monday or on Tuesday, whatever night of the week that, that you've chosen, um, set aside time where, where you could actually listen to lecture. Uh, the reason that I, I, I ask you for time is because bullet point number two, it's important to watch the entire lecture. You don't necessarily have to do it all in one night or all in one sitting, but get into the habit of, of listening to the entire lecture. Undoubtedly, there's going to be little pieces here and there where, where you're going to want to fast forward a little bit. 
you know, and jump ahead or, or jump back. Uh, but for the most part, uh, force yourself to sit through through the entire lecture. No, no lecture is is more than is more than two hours. In fact, most of them are, are right at right at about an hour about an hour and a half. So the actual time that that you're you're being asked to listen to to the lectures is not that great of an investment. But the 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 reward, the profit off that investment is going to be tremendous. But because you're going to be able to understand the 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 sequence of the sequence of of the of the research if you do it the other way and you're just jumping around lectures and you're back and forth what essentially is going to happen is that the information is going to become disjointed and it's not going to make sense to you if the information doesn't make sense to you once you actually do sit down to write inevitably your writing is going to reflect that type of uh that though is going to reflect those gaps that jumping around has has created for you. So please, pretty please, with sugar on top, listen to the entire lecture. Okay, I try to be somewhat entertaining, uh, maybe to the to the point of being a little over dramatic. I am aware of it. <laughs> it just is what it is, man. Um, bullet point number bullet point number three. Uh, you have to start writing. Yeah, I know. I know. It's the first thing you're listening to. It's the first lecture we have. You, you have to start writing, meaning that that once you get into into lecture number two and you get your first try it nows and you get to your first uh, your first ability to to really begin to explore your research, you have to start writing. Um, too often, you know, the especially at the beginning of the semester, we get lulled into a false sense of security. Uh, oh, you know, I have weeks and weeks ahead of me. I know we I know we have weeks ahead of us, but if you don't start writing now, you're going to you're you're going to be setting yourself up for a more difficult process that than than it uh, than it needs to be. Uh, finally, uh, hopefully you can find value in in the research process, and that's not not a BC thing, right? It's not Professor Perez thing. It's almost like a David Perez thing. I, I am sharing this process with you, and what I'm hoping is that it makes you a better teacher it's making your craft your your professional craft just a little bit more refined think about it like this if you have a kid or a group of kids that's struggling and you want to provide them some sort of intervention for their struggle don't you want to know whether that intervention worked or not of course you do if not you're just kind of like groping around in the dark looking for answers of the difficulties that your that your your students are having this research process the value that i want you to find in the research process has to do with with taking that research those research steps and internalizing them so that you use them on a daily basis in your in your classroom virtual or not okay I want to talk more, but I promised myself five minutes on this slide, and that was it. I've gone over already. <laughs> Wrap it up, man. Wrap it up. Okay, fine. I will certainly wrap it up. Usually at the, end of, uh, at the end of my lectures, I have something called a slide of clarity in which we talk about some of the activities that you could be doing for the coming week. Uh, with this welcome video, though, there is no clarity. <laughs> I shouldn't say it that way. There, there's not much for me to write in the uh, in the slide of clarity, other than to say, uh, by all means, get started on lectures one through three. Um, school school technically hasn't started, at least when when this will be published. School will not have started yet, so there's no reason why you can't watch a couple of those videos as part of your. Uh, as part of the end of your your end of summer routines. All right guys, I'm signing off and I will see you guys in lecture number 1. You guys have a great day.